I'm curious the process that you guys go through when you get a property under contract and you're marketing it to a lease purchase buyer. Um, do you require your lease purchase buyers to get an inspection on the property? Um, and if so, do they, do you give them the option to opt out on doing the inspection and they just have to give you that in writing or what's your process with that as far as, <clears throat> as far as inspections? we have not required them because we're selling the house as is. So if they choose not to get it, they, that's some, that's one of the things that I believe is covered in the CYA letter um, to basically say, Hey, I bought it as is. I know that. And whatever's wrong with it is my problem at this point. Okay. So, um, so we have a situation, Jeff, with this house um, that we've talked to you about where the lease purchase buyer, he, his business failed, he's filing bankruptcy. And so he obviously he moved out. He's not exercising his option to purchase the house. So um, because we were idiots and boxed ourselves into such a short time frame on this particular house, we're now forced, we don't have time to put any, another lease purchase buyer in there. So we're forced to sell it. And we've got um, a retail buyer lined up, but there's all kinds of issues um, with the inspection. This, this particular house is on an acre with a septic system. And um, we're finding out that there's some issues with the septic system. And um, so anyways, all of these issues that obviously could have been revealed from an original inspection. And so I was just curious your take on that. I mean, is it just kind of the luck of the draw? I, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we could avoid these kinds of situations in the future. Should we be getting inspections? Especially like on a house. I mean, would you recommend on a house that's, you know, got a septic system that's, that's, over and a well and a well and it's a house that's built in like what 60s. 60s i mean would you think it'd be smart in the future on older homes like that to require inspections you know in in california what we do and we make uh, i make my clients do it all over the country we have what's called a transfer disclosure statement most states have a similar version not all probably two-thirds um you have the seller sign that and, and spell out all of the things they know. And they have to disclose. In California, it's subject to criminal penalty if you fraudulently disclose something knowingly. Um, and then it obviously establishes a chain of information, a chain of, rep a chain of representations, and a basis upon which you can charge the seller with fraud. Sounds like that's what you got. The seller didn't disclose this stuff to you. Well, the seller is pleading the fifth, of course. They didn't know. They didn't know. They never had any issues with the septic. There was no plumbing issues up to the house. So how would they have known that, you know, it's got crushed pipes and then that maybe the, uh, what do you call it? I don't even know. You know the terminology. For what? what the septic at? system. What's wrong with it? The leach <laughs> seal. How would they, the they didn't know. Something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, people know, they just, they'll always claim. Remember, sellers are liars, whether they've sold the house yet or not, they still right. lie. Um, there, there's not a lot you can do. At, at the end of the day, yeah, you could get inspections on everything. Do you want to do it? Uh, now, based on your experience, your answer to that question might be yes. <laughs> I should do that on a go forward basis, um, especially these kind of outlier deals. I think I would tend to do it more along the lines of the dollars that you could make on a deal like this. If it's, you know, if it is a very profitable thing and you want to make sure you protect your profit, then get that inspection and do all that kind of stuff up front. If you think there's a risk there, mm -hmm. I would always get the equivalent of a, whatever your state has transfer disclosure statement, get that in writing make these people put it in writing because the, the law in all states says real estate disclosures have to be in writing. There's no such thing as a verbal oral disclosure. It has to be in writing. So I would do that and then you've got something to fall back on. Now in your case, what, what are you going to do? Is this, I mean, the seller is owed some money back, right? They took a carry back on this deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like 195,000 bucks. All right. Well, then I would say that the, I would negotiate here. You got to get your negotiation tap dance shoes on. Mm -hmm. All of these repairs, they're on you. You're going to have, they're coming off your 195. And if, if not, then, you know, we'll have to uh, talk to our attorney about fraud charges against you. You know, because crushed pipes don't happen overnight. You know, leach fields don't fill up overnight. They should have disclosed whatever the status was of all that kind of stuff.
passed. I'm sure Oregon has similar laws to California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, whether somebody told them they had to fill out a TDS or not, you still got to do it, even on a seller-based transaction. It's it's one of these things where you're you can be guilty of violating the law even though you were unaware of the law. Are you referring to the I think what they call here seller the seller disclosures? disclosures. Probably. What you're talking about the yeah. seller disclosures, and because I mean anytime we do a normal retail transaction, there's always seller disclosures that we have to provide. Right. <clears throat> and they would be they would have been in that same position. So you're gonna have to go back and negotiate with them and say, listen, here's the problem that we got. I've got a seller. We all have a chance to get out of this thing whole. Right. But you're going to have to eat into that 195. Um, you know, let's not argue about who's responsible. It's got to come out of your half. And this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your alternative is you go ahead and foreclose on your 195. Um, you know, you guys have been paying the underlying mortgage, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Tell them I'm no longer going to be paying that and you'll have to foreclose me off. And so you're gonna spend money to foreclose me off. I'm gonna have a counterclaim for fraud against you. So this is a, a message you may not want to deliver yourself depending on your relationship with the right. seller. You maybe should get your attorney to kind of write a real strong, uh, strongly worded, but very clear path of what's gonna happen should they not uh, be amenable to negotiating down that 195 to cover the costs of the things that are necessary to complete the sale you've got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where it's we're at. Tough. We're gonna, yeah, it's tough. Um, we're just going to wait and see how things pan out with this new. We've got a backup buyer and they're aware of the issues. So they're going to review the inspections. We're going to figure out if we can get the septic fixed without <laughs> it being too costly and then go from there so and then yeah we'll go back to the sellers the original sellers and start renegotiating that's what you got to do they, they they seem to think that it's our burden um they've made that pretty clear that it's on us we bought the house as is and it's our burden and so they're not really taking any kind of responsibility nor are they really wanting to take a loss on their profits you need so to dis we'll disabuse them you need to disabuse them of that thought process. First of all, yes, when you buy things, people are always, they mix this stuff up. <clears throat> the terminology is I'm buying it as is, but the law says I'm buying it as is subject to me knowing all the information about it. And if somebody over here, the seller has hidden information about it and not given it to you, you don't have the benefit of the transaction of buying it as is because you weren't aware of the details they hid. That's fraud. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I'm buying it as is, but I wasn't aware of this. I may not have bought it had I been aware of this, or I would have negotiated it differently, uh, making sure you paid for it. And we can't power. obviously prove that that the septic was broken before we purchased or after. There's no way to actually prove that, you know. <laughs> no, but um it's based on the useful life of that septic that type of thing so you know they they should have disclosed no matter what mm -hmm. what they knew right yeah the claim was there somebody happened. else in there before <clears throat> was there a tenant in there before or they lived there before they lived there and and according to them they'd never ever had any issues but okay. according to our inspector that pipe's been dug up before Okay, well, right we're not there. the first ones to to dig up that pipe and see and see that there's issues. Boom, right there. You just got them. That's it. Yeah. But somebody came in and and in the middle of the night dug up and inspected your septic system without you knowing about it and then didn't tell you about it. Really? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You want to tell that to a jury? Is that what you're sticking with? Yeah, and I mean, he said that plain as day. So mm -hmm. he said this isn't the first time someone's dug this up and and looked at it for some right. reason. Well, you, you, you put it as, as a ridiculous thing when you're negotiating, just like I just did. Mm -hmm. Look, the, you know, an inspection of this thing today proved that this thing had been dug up before. Are you telling me that you weren't aware that somebody went in and inspected on your benefit, your, your septic system, and then covered it back up and hid that from me? Really? Mm -hmm. it's like, ooh, I wish somebody come in and clean my house in the middle of the night without me knowing about it. That would be <laughs> awesome.